Hello, in this lecture, we're going to define weighted average or the weighted average method. According to Fundamental Accounting Principles, while 22nd edition, the definition of weighted average is method for assigning inventory costs to sales. The cost of available for sale units is divided by number of units available to determine per unit cost prior to each sale that is then multiplied by the units sold to yield the cost of the sale. That's a bit long because we're describing the actual calculation here, but the average cost flow assumption, the average method, is a cost flow assumption method, meaning we're trying to value the inventory, the inventory that we are then going to sell. We're not gonna be using specific identification. We're gonna use some kind of estimate, some kind of cost flow method, similar to first in, first out, similar to last in, uh, first out. We are now gonna use the average method to make an average of those units that we then sell. Let's take a look at an example. We are purchasing and selling very expensive coffee mugs here. And the first units that we have, we had 100 units that we purchased for $50. So we currently have 5,000 units. If we sold any coffee mugs at that point in time, it wouldn't be very difficult to know what the cost was. It was $50. However, if we purchase more units of the same exact coffee mugs, the price may change just due to factors like inflation and input costs. If we purchase 400 more units, for example, at $55, then now we're going to say we purchased 400 at 55 So we have two different costs for the same coffee mug that we then sell. If we use a cost flow assumption, we don't know exactly which mug we're going to sell. Question then is, are we going to cost the sale of that mug at 50 or $55 when we sell it. Under an average method, we'll say, how about neither? Why don't we take the average of the two? And you might be thinking that an average would be just 50 plus 55 divided by two, but we're really using kind of a weighted average because there's a lot more units at uh, the 55 than the 50. So we're gonna have to do the calculation that will be something like this. We've got the 100 units at 50. We've got 400 units at 55. That means we have 500 units, and the total cost then is the 5,000 plus the 22,000 or 27,000. We can then calculate the average to be 27,000 divided by 500 or 54,000, which is obviously closer to the 55 number than to the 50 number. Why? Because there's a lot more of them at that 55. That number then would be on the trial balance or the balance sheet. This is the dollar amount representing those 500 units that we have average cost for any of those units now being $54. Therefore, if we sold some units, we're selling 420 at 85. That's the sales price, not the cost. What will be the cost? The cost will of course be the $54. So the cost of the goods sold is gonna be that 54. In this case, all of them will be at that 54. What will be left over? We had 5,000 unit, 500 units. We sold 420. We're left with 80 units again at the average cost of 54, leaving us with 4,320 in Indian inventory. This would be the cost of goods sold in this case that we sold if we sold those 420 units. This would be the dollar amount that would be left over in Indian inventory.